Uncle Hoosh's hat. Hey guys, welcome back to Harrison Hacks. Today I'm going to show you guys, actually share with you guys, uh, my portable emulation station build. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to make a point of saying that uh, my hat's off to the creators of the themes, uh, the portable emulation station build, everyone that works hard on this stuff. I don't want to take any credit for it. This is just me sharing with, with the community, with you guys, um, to enjoy. This is my version of the build, so it's I don't want to take any credit, like I said. This was designed by other people. I've just modified it to my liking, uh, and I just I hope you guys enjoy it. So uh, let's get right into it, and I'm going to show you uh, exactly how to get it and how to use it. So here we go. So first thing you're going to want to do is follow the link in the description, and that will take you to my Google Drive. Um, and when you get to this link, it'll say, oops, there's a problem with the network. I don't know why it says that, but you can just hit download and that will download your portable game station 1.5.zip. So once you have that downloaded, uh, wherever you've downloaded it to, I've downloaded mine to the root of C. So here is my zip file. Um, now you need WinRAR or WinZip or 7-zip. Uh, you would right click. With 7-zip you can do extract here or with WinRAR extract here. Um, now once it's extracted, you'll have a folder looking like this. Now your portable game station folder uh, must be on the root of the drive. So I have mine on the root of C. You could have it on the root of D, E, F, whatever, whatever drive you want, but it, the folder must be on the root of the drive. It can't be within another folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our portable game station. Once you have yours extracted, we're going to go into dot emulation station, systems, RetroArch. We're going to scroll down and we're going to open up RetroArch. Now once we have RetroArch open, um, your first time launching RetroArch, you're going to be using your keyboard. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to press over to get to the gear logo. And we're going to go down to input. We're going to press enter. Now we're going to go all the way down until you see input user one binds. Press enter, and we're going to go to do our buttons. So basically, um, if you were using, I'm going to do for PS3 and Xbox 360 controllers. Uh, so what you would do to input a button, for the B button, if you're using PS3, you would hit enter, and you would press X on PS3. If you were on Xbox 360 controller, you would press enter, and you would press A. For that button. For the Y button, you would do the same. You would press enter, only for for this you would press square on PS3 or X on Xbox 360. Select button, uh, you would do select on PS3 or the back button on your Xbox 360 controller. Start button is your start button. Then your D-pad, up, down, left, right. Uh, the A button would be circle on PS3 or B on Xbox 360 and your X button would be triangle on PS3 or it would be the Y button on the Xbox 360 controller. Um, this would be L1 and R1 on PS3 and I believe these would be your bumpers. Uh, for Xbox 360, and then your L2, R2 for PS3, or your left trigger, right trigger on your Xbox 360. Um, you can switch these up whichever you prefer. Uh, these will be like in Super Nintendo would be your L and R button, and then these are just extra buttons. Um, and then I don't have thumbsticks. I'm using a SNES USB controller. Um, so I won't I don't have these configured, but if you do um, when it says press the L3 button that means click in Your analog stick like a button just press down and same with your R3 and Then just follow the prompts to do your analog sticks uh, right left down up right left down up So once you have your controller configured You should be controlling retro arc now with your controller 
So to select something, uh, like to pick something on here, um, would be the X button on PS3 or A on Xbox 360. To go back a screen would be circle on PS3 or the B button on the Xbox 360. So I only went back there. Uh, we're going to go back in and we're going to hit save auto config. There we go. Now we're going to back out and we're going to go to input hotkey binds. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go to quit retro arc. Now this will make sense later. Uh, what you're going to want to do is enter this as down on your D-pad. So just do it and down on the D-pad. That's set. Then next we're going to go to enable hotkeys. I suggest using your select button or your back button if you're using Xbox 360. Um, so you would hit that and press select. Okay. And that is it for your hotkeys. So we'll back out of here. And lastly, we're going to go to, when you start here, it'll say none, the menu toggle gamepad combo. So what I like to set this to is L1, R1, start and select. Um, and basically what this will do will let you enter RetroArch mid game. So when you're in a game, you press uh, L1, R1, start and select. At the same time, RetroArch will pop up, which I'll be showing you uh, a little bit a little bit later in the video. Okay, so now we want to back out of here and we're going to go over to the Space Invader looking dude. We're going to go down to configurations, go in here and save current configuration. Now once we've done that, we're going to back out. We're going to go to quit RetroArch. Okay, so now RetroArch has been set up for us. Um, your controller is configured for RetroArch. So now you're going to want to go back to your main folder of your portable game station 1.5. Now do not launch the emulation station application. You want to go to launch it full screen or windowed. Now when I launch full screen it takes a bit longer because I don't have the best computer and OBS is running in the background but it runs perfectly when I'm not running my OBS. So just for, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to run it in windowed mode. And your first boot on emulation station, you will have to configure, configure your controller within emulation station. Uh, it's very simple to do. I'm going to go through it with you guys uh, right now as soon as we load up. So I have one gamepad connected, or detected, sorry. So just press and hold any button, and this screen will pop up. So basically follow the prompt, so I'm going to press D-pad up, down, left, right, I'm going to press start, select. Now again, uh, the layout for this, this will be circle on PS3, or B on Xbox 360. This will be X on PS3, or A on Xbox 360. This will be your triangle button on your PS3, or it will be Y on the Xbox 360. And this will be square on your PS3 or X on your Xbox 360. Um, and then you have, again, so here this will be your L1, R1. So L1, R1. And then if you have L2, R2, I don't have that. So let's say you're using a controller like me. You don't have thumbsticks or the extra triggers. All you do is press a button, hold it down and release it when it says not defined. So what we're going to do is press and hold, release, press and hold, release, press and hold, release. And we're going to do this all the way down until we light up OK. Now, uh, this the combination of using emulation station is uh, reverse from RetroArch. So basically, to select something, you'll use circle or the B button on your controllers. If you're using PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, if you want it, so if I want to enter something, I would press circle or B. Oh, let me just finish that. Yeah, that was uh, a little much. And if I want to go back a menu, then you would press X on the PS3 or A on the Xbox 360, and that'll take you back to the main menu. 
So here's what I've included for you guys. Um, basically you're getting 264 Sega Master System games. For Sega Genesis we have 796. For Nintendo 64, 303. For the NES we have 778. TurboGrafx-16 we have 94. Sega 32X you've got 33. Super Nintendo you've got 779 games and Virtual Boy you have 24 games so let's say I wanted to play something on Super Nintendo everything has the wheel art in the top left as well as the gameplay snap videos um, I've gone through I'm pretty sure everything's the way it should be um, I mean, I've, I've really gone through this, so it should be set up for you guys. I know everything has videos and wheel art. Um, everything looks to be named perfectly, so let's go to... Uh, here's a classic I haven't played in a long time. So here's here's B.O.B. Uh, we'll launch that. Now, your RetroArch didn't come configured for your controller because I, didn't, I don't know what controller you guys are using. But what I did configure in RetroArch is I've updated everything. I've updated all the cores. I've... I've made it so that when you launch a game, it launches full screen. So all that's already been pre-done. You shouldn't have to go into RetroArch for anything unless you know what you're doing and you want to customize it. In which case, you would press L, L1, R1, or LR start and select at the same time. And now we are in RetroArch um, if you wanted to do that. There shouldn't be a need for you guys to, to do anything with this. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I suggest not going in here. So basically... What I would do if you accidentally get in here um, is go to quick menu and resume and you're back at the game. Now if you remember we set up the hotkeys, quit retro arc was, was down on the d-pad and select was to enable the hotkey. So if you want to exit a game and go back to emulation station, let's hold select and press down on the d-pad. And now you're back in emulation station and you can go ahead and play another game if you're done. Um, now, I guess one thing I really want to show you guys uh, within RetroArch, and I want to go through this so that you don't have to worry about it, is save states. So let's go into RetroArch. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have to be mid-game. So let me go into a game. Okay, and we're going to go into RetroArch. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the gears. We're going to go to Input. We're going to go into input hotkey binds again. So basically, um, if you want to do save states, what I would suggest is your, you can choose any button you want. Um, so I'm going to choose R because I'm, I'm using my Super Nintendo controller. So I do that, press R. And I want if I want to load that state, I'm going to choose L. L for load, R for save. Okay, so once you've done that, you're going to want to go back. Whoops. Sorry, guys. You're going to want to go back, back, and then configurations. Save current configuration again. Okay. Now we're going to want to go back to our quick menu and back to your game. So if you want to save now, now that you have your buttons configured, you have to enable your hotkey, which is hold select, and you can press R. And now I've saved. And then let's get past this point. Okay, so it's changed a little bit here. Alright, so now I'm going to hold select, press L, and now I've loaded back to where I saved from. So you can save at any point in any game um, instead of using the in-game saves. So if you, you, know, if you get to a really hard point uh, in a game and you don't want to restart back at the beginning of the level, you just hold select press your save button and if you want to if you die or whatever you just go back you're still in game hold select and press your load button and you're all set so I'm just gonna exit this game right now hold select press down so this is everything that's included for you guys um, I'm just using basically the Hursty blue um, uh, theme I've modified put a different background and I've also changed so that these are not little blue tabs. They're 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 um, showing you the 
the actual logos uh, for each system. So this is what I've included. Um, the link will be in the description for the download for you guys. Uh, I hope you all enjoy it. This should fit on almost any 16 gigabyte USB thumb drive if that's how you choose to run it. Um, or if you choose to run from uh, external hard drive, just remember it's got to be in the root of that drive. Um, again, guys, I, I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you need the password, uh, it's in the description as well, um, in case you missed that, uh, to unlock the zip file. Um, the password will be in the description. Um, so, thanks guys. Hopefully you enjoy, and have a good day.